Hey guys, this is Marina Tolentino. I'm a real estate agent, a multi-passionate entrepreneur, and I live here on Oahu in Hawaii. Today I'm gonna to talk about finding a brokerage, what it's like when you're interviewing, what to even do after you pass your exam, and you have to find somewhere to hang your license. So let's kind of dive in into all the questions you need to ask when you're talking to different brokers. All right, so step number one is you're gonna to need to research. How the heck do you start doing that, right? So you're gonna look into a lot of different things. You need to get into spy mode, you're looking into people's Instagrams, their different accounts, look at company websites, go into stock evaluations if the companies have stocks. I really want you to get nerdy here and do some research. Definitely check up anything newsworthy. Is there something where there's lawsuits on the company? So in real estate, we know there's like big franchise names, maybe Keller Williams, Coldwell Banker, Better Homes, EXP of course. So I want you to do research to all of those plus your local independent indie brokers. There's a range of variety. So it's your job now before you find where you're gonna work, who's the best fit for you, all right? Let's go into when it's time to interview. So first of all, you're gonna do your research, right? Then maybe you've narrowed down five to six options in your city that you really love and you think might be a good fit for you. So you're gonna set up an interview. Reach out to someone that you're a huge fan of, maybe you've been stalking them for a while as you're taking your licensing exam. This is when you're gonna reach out, say, hey, I'm newly licensed or I'm newly, I just passed my test. Now what do I do? You know, they're gonna be so excited, hopefully, to talk to you. And that's a good feedback too, or like, is this person even care that you're interested? Are they even looking to work with you? You wanna kind of get that radar going as well. But I want you to prepare this list of about 10 to 15 questions that you should be answering every time you interview a broker, okay? So let's just kind of roll through these. And I have done this when I was doing this about a year and a half ago. Maybe like seven brokers is how many that I interviewed. And I really, really recommend it, um, at least interviewing five because they are literally so different in business models and structure models and commission models. You need to be able to compare them all and reference to say, oh, that's actually really cool. Or wow, that one sucks, you know? <laughs> it's kind of all over the board. So I want you guys to do that and just have your thinking caps on. Remember that you are interviewing them and it's not the other way around. They want you on their team, okay? So the first question I want you to ask somebody is experience. I want you to ask, how long have you been in the industry? How long have you been with this brokerage? Comparison between different brokerages, if they've skipped around a little bit, why is that? Why didn't they like the last one? Why do they love the one they're at? Do they have any current struggles with their brokerage that they wish might be different? These are all things that you should be taking note of and hopefully it'll just gain your further awareness of the company. And then of course, number two, we wanna know how we're gonna get paid, right? So don't be afraid to ask about commission. They're expecting it already when they're interviewing it with you. So just bring it up in the start. Just say, okay, tell me about your commission splits, about your caps, what do you offer? What's incentive for me to work with this company versus this other company? And it's okay to ask specific questions. I know it feels a little bit uncomfortable, like talking about money, people don't like to do it, but honestly, like just get it out there in the air. Once you do, you'll feel a lot more better just because you've already started the conversation. Then I want you to ask about franchise fees. So depending on the brokerage, the bigger the name, the more fees usually there is. So ask like what other fees are associated? So I know how I'm gonna get paid commission split, but what's my back end? And this is where you need your business hat on. You're not just a salesperson, you're also running your own business. So I want you to think more than how much you're bringing in. You also need to be calculating how much you're gonna be spending out every transaction every month. Also, if it's a brick and mortar, if they have a physical office, you need to be asking if there's specific office hours you're required to go to. If you have desk hours, cold calling hours, all of that you can ask. Sometimes they're even gonna charge you to rent a desk, so keep that in mind as well. Another thing is any other brokerage related fees. So your startup fees, your office fees, your insurance fees, what other expenses you'd be responsible for. So that's things like lock boxes, your signs, your business cards, your website hosting, your realtor membership, if in case you didn't know. So you get your MLS subscription, right? Which is your access to all the listings. And then you also have to get your realtor badge or just to say that you are an ethically aligned agent. You're not just a real estate agent, you are a realtor. So that's an extra fee every year. I think it's like usually around $400, but just keep in mind, that's another thing you have to pay for. Next thing is how are referrals handled? So you're not just working with buyers and sellers that live here, you're also gonna be working with people that are relocating from other states, other cities. Maybe your aunt has a friend that happens to be moving to your city. How does your company handle those referrals? What's the split like? How does that work? That's all stuff you need to know. Also, what about the leads you bring in and manage versus the ones that your team or your company provides? Your company and your broker has a huge probably league magnet somewhere. 
and they might not always be able to take on the business themselves. So how does it work if they hand you business versus if it's your own friends and family that you're bringing into the company? Next up, transaction coordination. So if you don't know what that is yet, basically it's like an assistant that's gonna handhold you through the escrow process. So once you have an accepted contract with your client, what do you do with all the paperwork? How do you talk to the title company? How do you talk to the termite guy? It's usually with a transaction coordinator and I swear by ours, shout out to Level Up TC, they are the best. Um, but how does your company handle that? Do they have a TC in office or is that something you're gonna need to provide on your own out of pocket? That's another good question to ask. Programs provided. So the things like DocuSign, zip forms, any other backend program that you need to like run your business day to day outside of Gmail or your email address, ask what's provided when you sign up with the company versus what you're gonna need to do out of pocket. Next up would be marketing resources. So does your company provide flyers, business cards, signs, all those things, or are you expected to buy that upfront out of pocket as well? Depending on if you're on a team structure or a solo agent structure, all of that kind of varies based on your business. So take note to that. And I know this is a lot, so I'll just stop here for a second and say, I would highly recommend an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> just to kind of like blast out all these things and all these questions you have for each interview. By the time you get to the third interview, you're gonna forget what interview number one said. And so it just keeps you organized and helps you prepare for the next one, okay? Meeting space. So again, if you have a physical office, likely you have a conference room. Talk about how that works. How does it work for booking it? Does it cost anything extra to book it? Or if it's a virtual brokerage like eXp Realty, we have other office spaces that we use. So just ask, depending on your city, depending on your area, what's available to you and how you can take advantage of that. And especially now with COVID, it's like, super hard to meet in person because you can't go to Starbucks. You can't go to a lot of places, so we have to get creative. But just be thinking about that in mind. You're not always gonna wanna meet someone in a parking lot to like hand them keys. Sometimes it's nice to sit down and have a nice conversation. And next up is training. So how does it work if you're a new agent joining a company? Do they have virtual trainings? Do they have in-person trainings? Are the in-person trainings mandatory and require you to be there? I know for someone like myself, that would never work because I have small children and I need to be all over the place. I can't commit to eight, 10 hours of training in person in office for 12 weeks. No way, it would never fly. Like for example, with our company, it's all virtual. We do it by Zoom and it's recorded and we're able to watch it at our own leisure. But the responsibility is on you to show up and do the work. So no one's gonna handhold you and make you do the class. If you wanna be successful, you've gotta show up. And so it's another thing to know. Is there any additional cost for the training? Some companies charge you extra to do the training course with them. And then what other education programs do they have available after the initial 101 of real estate onboarding with the company? Is there additional training available? What are the costs of that? What do they recommend? Then mentorship. So who is actually gonna help you out in the field? Who's gonna help you open a lockbox when you don't know how to open one? <laughs> who's gonna calling a, uh, a seller for the first time? Who's gonna hold your hand and really help you through that process when you have no idea what to say, who to say it to and when to say it? This is when your mentor is gonna be your best friend. So does your company provide you with a mentor? Do you have to find one on your own? Hope you get lucky and hopefully they have time for you just what kind of mentorship opportunities are available with that company. Then meetings. If it's a team, for sure, what are the regular meetings you need to go to? Even with a big company, if you're with Coldwell Banker, they probably have monthly meetings. When are those meetings? Does it fit with your existing schedule or is it something you're gonna have to change? Is the attendance mandatory or is it recorded and you're able to watch it later? Those are things you wanna think about. Some more things to think about, promoting your business. So what happens when you have a new listing or you have a new escrow? Does your company promote it for you? Or are you totally on your own to promote that business on social media? Um, it totally ranges between companies. So some you'll see they're totally like sold in escrow, sold over asking. And that's their job is to promote how successful they are. Other ones, it's just gonna be on you as the agent to kind of show up and pat yourself on the back every now and then. So <laughs> just keep that in mind and it's good to ask those questions. Okay, next thing is performance. So certain companies actually require you to do a certain number of transactions in order to stay with that team or that broker. So don't be afraid to ask like, hey, maybe for someone like me, I'm a working mom. What do I need to do in order to stay here? Is there a minimum? Do I have to do 12 a year, 24 a year? What's it look like? Just to get that out there in case you might think otherwise and you're thinking, oh, like one every two months is ideal. I'm just doing this part time. The broker might have different expectations of you. and be a whole world of mess if all of a sudden you're expected to cold call four hours a day and that's totally not what you signed up for. So just find out things like that. Asking them to describe the atmosphere of the office. So asking them straight up like, hey, how's it like in your office? What's the culture like? How are the people? Who's your favorite person? You're not to say who's your favorite person, but like, 
who do you think I would be aligned with or I would really click with in your office? And just asking them and then writing that person's name down so you can call her after and say, hey, so-and-so said you were cool. Can we talk? I'd love to interview you about your experience with the company. And then of course, scheduling a tour of the brokerage. Hopefully you can meet some people. Again, this is for a brick and mortar. If there isn't a brick and mortar like EXP, then definitely you would be interviewing other agents that you feel like you might be similar with. So for myself and my team, there was another working mom, Pume, and I was like, yes, she's doing it. She's got two kids. I have to talk to her. And I'm so glad that I did and we clicked, but it was just a good way to relate of like where I am in my life and seeing her success. I wanna be like that. How can I get to where you are today? Um, and we just started that conversation. So that's what you wanna do with these companies, making sure that you have like a similar culture vibe, you know? And then you can ask them if you can sit in on upcoming trainings and meetings before you're even onboarded. So just saying like, hey, this sounds great. I'd love to kind of sit in on a meeting. When's the next one? Would that be okay with you if I just kind of sit in quietly. Hopefully they say yes, I would hope so. Just to be fully transparent with you and you can kind of see how meetings are run, what's their efficiency like, how their communication is, super helpful. Then wrapping up here with interviews, but mostly it's like support. So I want you to think about company culture, the mentorship, the training, all of that. What happens after mentorship? What is the overall company support for you? Do they have like a university? Like EXP has a university online with ongoing classes and education constantly. Is it something you have to pay for out of pocket? Like I know Keller Williams has, I forget what it's called, but they have ongoing trainings, but it costs money. It's a good penny to pitch into those. And it's usually like a 12 week or a six month program that you would go through, kind of like a mastermind course, but that's not provided for free. And so just ask like, what's the ongoing support? And then of course, technology. We are in 2021. Almost 2022, your tech better be on point and better be ahead of the curve. So I wanna know from my company that they are trying to break the mold. They're really striving to be advanced. If I feel like the broker isn't very technologically advanced, it's kind of a turnoff for me. I wanna know that I can Slack them, email them, FaceTime them, whatever it is really easily. And so if that's gonna be a pain point, it's probably not gonna be the brokerage for me. So just thinking that way, um, overall will give you a really good sense of you know, the interview process and repeating this one after the other till you have five or six to compare. It takes time, so give yourself patience. People have really busy schedules too. So just keep that in mind. Like I wouldn't expect from the day you pass your test to find a broker in a week. It might take a good month process for you to really feel it out and do your due diligence. This is a huge career move for you. So I don't want you to rush into something and then be regretting it later. Okay, so my last reminder is for you guys not to forget so you've just got your test passed and now you're looking to hang your license. There's a few more things. Let's see, four more things exactly I wanna talk about. So you need to audit your social media profiles because now, like I said, you're interviewing them, but they're also technically looking at you. So they're gonna Google your name, right? And what's gonna show up? Have you Googled your name? I want you to do that today if you haven't, but audit your profile. So your LinkedIn, make sure it's updated with your most up-to-date job skills, what you're really good at, making sure that your face is online too. A lot of people are like secret, profiles. <laughs> I want to be able to find your face. I want to see who you are and what you're up to. Like, do you have kids? What do you do for fun? I want to be able to find you is my point. You can't just be top secret. You're not a top secret agent. You're a real estate agent now. You need to be able to be found. Okay. And then the second thing to remember is no resume is needed because we're not applying for something necessarily. You are a contractor for the company. And so you still need to prepare for standard interview questions. So while you might not need a resume, you should still know like, hey, these are my strong points. This is what I actually like, am really good at and I know I'm gonna be awesome at. But also like, do you have any weaknesses that you might wanna fess up to? Like, hey, maybe I'm really bad at time management. I should probably say I want some support in that area. Just being honest with them and letting them know you are striving for growth will really help them. Then the third thing to remember is upskilling. So you don't have any business yet, I don't think, because you just passed your test. You probably don't have clients lined up at the door. So this is a great time to upskill, meaning you pick a skill and you just start leveling up a little bit here and there. You can learn a bajillion things on YouTube. So something like editing video, maybe you wanna do some IGTVs, just let them know like, hey, I actually started doing this on my own. I'm really psyched about it and I wanna share more with you. I don't know, just like explaining to them, I don't know how to do that yet, but I'm learning how, shows them that you're striving for personal growth and I think that's huge. The last thing I want you to remember is to upgrade your professional interview outfit. Okay, so we are in a very casual world in 2021. Jeans are usually pretty appropriate. 
but you are interviewing. And so I want you to show up like the professional that everyone expects you to be. So I love going to places like H&M and Zara just for a quick update, but it makes you feel a little bit more confident too when you rock that new outfit. And so it's important that you show up for the person that you want to be. Maybe not the person you are today. You might be a little bit insecure being like, I don't know what I'm doing in this industry, but I want you to show up as if you own it, as if you are the most successful real estate agent and you damn well deserve this job. So you need to show up like it, okay? So last thing is just to remember you got this. It's a lot, it's a huge progress and process to get through all these interviews. And you're gonna find people that you probably despise. You're like, oh my gosh, how are they in business? And then you're gonna find the other side. You're gonna find your people and you're gonna get so stoked to work with them. And that's where I want you to find yourself. Find yourself with a company that grows, that gives back to you and doesn't just take, 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 okay? So as always, I'm more than welcome to be open about my own experience and journey with eXp Realty and my own interview process with these other brokerages. So I'm gonna leave a link below to my Calendly and you guys are more than welcome to schedule a call with me. Even if it's a quick two or three, five minute call, that's more than welcome. But I'm always down to connect with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm gonna continue this um, in a, probably a three to four part video series, just kind of breaking down what to do after you get your, after you pass your test and then what to do next, because it's a lot. All right guys, see ya.